Hello guys, I'm going to show you what happens when you introduce a new switch to your network and it is configured as a um, VTP server and it also has a higher revision number. So let's go ahead and see this switch number five, which I call a bad boy because it is a bad boy, right? Let's go and see, show VTP status. Let's see the status of this. Um, as you can see, the revision number is 11 and it is configured as a server. So what it's going to do is it's going to send all its, um, all its um, VLAN information over to the um, VTP uh, clients, right? So let's see, show VLANs, let's see what, oh, show VLAN brief. So you can see right here that it has VLAN 10 through 20 and it has the revision number is 11. And if the revision number is higher than the one we have right here, let me see, revision number was, I'm sorry, let me see, revision number here is four, and right here, I believe it's 11, I said, right? Yep, revision number 11. Since this one has a higher revision, and when it sends it over the VTP client, what it's going to do is, the VTP client is going to accept it because it's a higher revision number, which means it is a new update that is coming from a VTP um, from a VTP server, right? So what it's going to do is it's going to take it. So let's go ahead and just, as soon as you plug it in, let's go ahead and plug it in and let's do a fast Ethernet 6 and 6, but we first need, need to configure that into a trunking mode. So you can trunk um, interface fast Ethernet 6 switch board mode let's make it a trunk and like I said before what it's going to do is since this one has a higher revision what the client is going to think is that it needs to update because a server is sending an update since this one has a lower revision number it says oh I only have four so 11 is the um, the next update right so what it's going to do is it's going to delete let's go ahead and show VLAN brief it's going to delete all the databases and it's going to add a new one. Okay, so this is a, what happens when you introduce a new switch and it is configured as a VTP server, right? So let's give it a couple, a couple minutes because it is about to um, trunk. Just give it, let's give it a couple seconds. So I put it on, okay, let's see. And there it is, now it's up. So like I said, this one has VLAN 10 through 20. So let's see what happens now. This one used to have VLAN 10, 20, 30, and 40. And um, show VLAN brief and see what happens. It configure VLAN 10 through 20. Let's see right here what we have. And here it is. Also, the VTP server that the, the VTP or the other switch that was configured as a VTP server, it also took that because of the revision number. I'm going to show you right now. Show VTP status. Here it is. Now it took that revision number that the new switch had before, right? That it was revision number 11. So to send it over, everybody, this one should have it as well. Um, should have all the VLANs um, 10 through. Let's see, show VLAN status. Yeah, show VLAN status now, show VLAN brief. Here it is, it has 10 through 20. So it misconfigure your entire network. Okay, so that is a nightmare for um, engineers. And this is why a lot of people do not use VTP, does not enable VTP. And also what you could do is before you introduce a new switch, what you need to do is set it as before you plug it into a network, set it as transparent mode. And that way um, it's not going to send whatever information it has on. Or what you could do is 
you erase the entire um, erase the entire story config and that should also do it um, thank you for watching that was all for this video and I'll see you on the next one